Hello, and in this video, we are going to look at creating a sunset with some fairy lights and some nice palm trees. So you will have seen the example um, on the slide, and that's what we're going to be aiming for. So first of all, we're going to be using a range of tools. We're going to use the marker tool, we're going to use the highlighter, and we're going to use the light pen as well for the fairy lights. Actually, using our slider bar at the side here, conveniently, the colours are arranged in an order that we're going to use them in. So, first of all, you must select the highlighter tool for this task. And I've selected the largest nib on the highlighter. So we're going to work through from the darker purples, not, quite, not the navy, we will use that though, the darker purples through to the lighter purples through to the pinks and then going into the ready orangey yellow colors so we're going to try and fit all of these on our page i'm going to start at the top this time we're going to start with the dark purple there's so many ranges of purples in this slider bar that you could nearly change the tone for every single stroke that you make on the page just be careful that you don't actually change the color of the slider i'm finding working from left to right works quite well for this task so don't worry if it's not a massively steady hand the reason that we're using the highlight at all so as I've said in other videos, the highlighter is tool is designed to be slightly transparent because really the purpose of it is to highlight text. It's so you can read text th from underneath and just highlight the key parts of the text. But it has this lovely feature about it that when you overlap it, it actually looks a little bit painterly on your page. We're going to just do one line of like a red colour and then skip over and go to an orange. So yeah, so it has this lovely painterly effect when you layer it on top of each other, which is pretty cool. And it works quite well for when we're painting with our seesaw application. So now I'm getting close to the bottom. I'm actually just gonna speed this up and get to a slightly more lighter yellowy colors now, because I want to make sure that I've got some yellowy colors in there at the base of this. And last but not least, put one more line in, okay, and just carry them the yellow all the way to the bottom. We will actually cover this bottom part up afterwards, so I'll show you how. Okay, so we've got the start of our sunset. At this stage now, I want you to change to the marker tool option, which you can see has come up here now. I'm going to select a nib size appropriate for creating a bit of horizon. So we're not going to worry too much about too much detail on the horizon. Let's just make sure that we get a nice blue, navy blue colour. So there's this light blue, it's too light. The purple's too close to the sky colours. You want to bring it into the navy blue colour. You could use black, but I think that the, the blue tones work really nicely with the rest of the sunset appearance the blue tones and the the purple obviously has blue in it when it's created so you create purple using blue and red and so to have the blue as the horizon complements the whole color scheme of your sunset so you can see i've kind of brought the sides up each side we're not doing massive amounts of detail just some sort of lumpy wiggly lines to suggest a horizon. Now I'm going to keep that colour but I'm going to change my nib to something smaller because I want to create a couple of palm trees. So I'm going to first of all put in a palm tree at the side here. So I'm just going to stick the branch in there. So this is going to be the trunk. And then I'm just going to pop in how many branches I want. So I'm going to try to create two branches. So I'm going to put the main part of the branch in first and then this is where we're going to start to build all of the leaves off afterwards. But first I'm just going to colour in the trunk of my palm tree. You don't need to worry about doing any 
too much texture here. It doesn't matter if your lines are a bit wiggly actually because these trees and natural forms are naturally created. They are imperfect in their shape and their design so it actually adds to your work if it is a bit wobbly, the lines. Now you can see I'm making some marks here to suggest leaves on the tree. So as we know, palm leaves are quite spiky and there's many of them along a branch. So we're going to pop some mark making in there to create the illusion of leaves on our, on our palm tree. And we might just pop a few suggestion of a few leaves down here as well, where there'd be a branch in the, in the background around the other side of the tree probably. Okay, so that's our that's our foreground tree. So it's for, foreground because it's the closest to us. We're going to now create another tree. This one's going to be more towards the background, so we're going to make it smaller. Check to see if you need to change your nib size. I think I'll keep the nib size on my marker. Definitely keep the colour, but keep the nib size for this. I'm just going to draw in the trunk of the palm tree now if something goes amiss and you know, don't not too sure whether you like that don't forget you can just press the back button if you're not happy with your design i'm going to try to fit in i think maybe three trees but let's see how we go it's okay if it's just one and remember it doesn't matter if your hand's not steady you notice the way that i've drawn the trunk i've drawn it a bit thicker at the bottom and a bit bit narrower in the middle. I've tried to create it so it's leaning over a little bit. Now I'm gonna pop in some branches and we know that with the palm tree branches, they kind of sweep out a bit like an umbrella, like that. Obviously that does not look great as it is at the moment, but we're gonna pop some mark making on here with the leaves, so I've changed my nib size. Because this is further in the background, I want to create a little bit more finer leaves for this particular tree. So you can use your finger for this. You can see we're using the branch as our guide and all of our leaves are coming out from the branch. And we can fill in, if we want to fill in some gaps afterwards, we can certainly do that with maybe even a thicker uh, marker nib. So carry on going. You can even try out different nib sizes, like even smaller. I wouldn't recommend going any bigger for the background ones because you'll lose the illusion of perspective, which is what you're trying to create with this piece. I'm going to have to have a little bit of patience for this. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually create this artwork out of traditional materials for art. So paints would work really well. You would layer it in exactly the same way. It's just that if the background, if this background was painted, what all you would need to do is wait for it to dry before you started drawing on your palm trees but you would layer it in the same way these palm trees could actually these palm trees could actually become paper cutouts over this which could be a painted background so that is also an option for you it could even be color pencils so don't forget that anything that i show you on seesaw can be completed using traditional materials if you want to as well okay so i feel like i'm running out of room a little bit but i might try and pop a very small palm tree just in the background just in the middle here and for this one I think I'm going to try to create the illusion that this one's even further away into the background so I'm going to make it narrower and I'm going to make it slimmer and then we're going to put um, a few branches onto this one try not to let it interfere with the foreground one and then I am going to have a look at maybe even changing my nib size again, see if I can get even smaller leaves. So you can see the mark making that I'm creating these little lines of hatching with leaves. Remember hatching is the proper 
term for this. All mark making comes down to three types of marks. See the stippling, which is the dots that we've talked about before, or hatching, which are the lines, or cross hatching, which you might have guessed is the hatching lines crossed over each other. And these are your most useful mark making techniques that you can use to manipulate to create lots of different interesting textural artworks. Okay, so we are finishing off this tree. Remember, I've changed my nib size so to suit my perspective of my picture. I'm going to actually just change my nib size, make it a bit wider here. I'm just going to fill in this bit with a bit of block colour. Not all the way, but just in some areas. There we go. And I'm going to just... My tree looked a little bit too crooked there, like it was going to fall over. Okie dokie. Let's see if I need anything else. Just a few more leaves there, just so that it doesn't look like it's a wilting tree. Lovely. Now we're ready to create our fairy lights on our picture. So we've got the horizon, we've got a foreground tree, a midground tree, which is this one, and a background tree, which is this one here. And now we're going to create those string fairy lights. I think three strings of fairy lights is the maximum realistically you're going to get in. So decide on what size thickness of wire you're going to go for. I can't decide between these two. I might just try out the smaller one first and see how we go. I'm going to start right up in the top corner and I'm going to bring that across the page and a kind of sweep like it's hanging and then I'm going to go from the other side and bring it all the way across there we go, like it's hanging, and then I'm going to come back one more time from this side. So you can see I'm kind of like doing a, um, a zigzag across the page nearly with, there we go. Okay, now I'm just going to pop that line back into there. Okay, great. So now I've got my string of lights, the wire. Now what I want to create is the bulb holders. So for this, I've changed my marker pen tool up to the next size. So I used the thinner one here to create the, the wire and now I've changed to the holders. So this is where I'm just gonna pop in. It's not quite a dot, it's a little bit wider than a dot. You're gonna pop in basically the bulb holders. So space them apart. A little bit because we are going to use the light tool on this we don't and so we want them to shine out don't worry about the ones that disappear into the into the foliage of the trees we we will um try to pop those in afterwards but as you can see i'm popping this is the bulb holder so this is the indicator of where each bulb is going to go okay so now the fun parts we are going to go all the way up to the brightest yellow. So I've slid it all the way up. We're just going to keep our marker tool and we're going to keep the same size because that works quite well. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to pop in our bright yellow bulbs into our holders. And remember, these can just be like a dot type shape. All the way. And last bit to decorate. This is where we use the light pen. So make sure that you've got a medium sized nib and get your slide, your slider all the way up to the brightest yellow. And then here we're going to tap, tap in the center. The reason that you have to tap a few times is that I've discovered whilst I've been playing around with Seesaw that when you, if I demonstrate on just this darker bit here, when you tap a couple of times, 
Can you see? It creates a halo of light around that uh, initial dot. Whereas if you only tap the once, so if I do it once more time for you, tap once, it creates a bit of a glow, but not too many times. This is two taps, this is three taps, this is four taps. You can see that that, that glow of light around the edge is starting to get more. So the key is tap away in the center of your bulb over the same dot. Let's see how many am I doing? One, two, three, four, five. Seems to be a good number. And you can go right ahead and finish off all of your bulbs so that you can create this lovely switched on fairy light appearance in your wonderful holiday sunset scene. Lovely, now you've switched your fairy lights on, all you need to do is press save in the corner of the screen, hit the, hit the save button and upload a copy to the visual arts folder for me please. Can't wait to see what you come up with. Don't worry if you can't fit three trees into your background. I have an extremely large iPad, which helps. If you can only do two trees, that is more than enough. I am very much looking forward to seeing you play around with the lights as well. You could try different colours. I just went for the bright yellow because it complements the whole overall artwork. But please feel free to try this out on paper, with paints, with pencils, with cut out paper, any which way that you want to have a go with it. Good luck.